Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice differential equation. We have dx over dy equals 1 over x plus y. And I'll be presenting two methods. And I'm going to start with the second one. So, first of all, I want you to take a look at this, dx over dy. Is that a fraction? Some people say it's not. But guess what? dx over dy is a fraction, so we can flip it, right? Let's go ahead and do that. If you flip this, it becomes dy over dx, in other words, finding the reciprocal, and the right-hand side just becomes x plus y. Why? Because we can, right? It makes sense. Now, by doing this, we actually got dy over dx, which is the derivative of y with respect to x, which can then be written as y prime. So y prime equals x plus y. Nice. Now I want to put this in a nicer form. So putting the old y's on the same side, subtract y, you get y prime minus y equals x. And the reason um, that I do this is I want to take advantage of the homogeneous version of this equation. This is a non-homogeneous equation because, because we have a function of x on the right hand side. But instead of f, x, if we had 0, then that would be a homogeneous equation. So here we go. By replacing x with 0, by the way, it's not substitution. Just assuming that the right-hand side equals 0, we get the homogeneous version of this equation. And this equation actually can be easily solved by using what is called the characteristic equation. And to get that, you can basically just replace y with something like e to the power rx where r is going to be the roots of our characteristic equation. In some cases, you get real roots. In some cases, you get non-real complex roots. And sometimes you get double roots or multiple roots. And each case is obviously a little different. But if you just go ahead and replace y with that, y prime is just going to be from chain rule r times e to the power rx. Let's go ahead and substitute these into our equation and see what happens. Of course, I'm talking about the homogeneous version here y prime is r e to the rx minus y, which is e to the rx equals 0. e to the rx we can factor out, and we get r minus 1. Notice that e to the rx cannot be 0, even for complex values of x. This can't be 0, so we can basically just set r minus 1 equal to 0. And from here we get r equals 1, and since we assume that our solution is going to be in this form, in other words, y is equal to e to the power rx. This just means that e y equals e to the power x is a solution. But I'm saying it's a solution because obviously there are so many other solutions or many other forms you can write this in. Obviously, if y equals e to the x works, y equals c times e to the x also works. You can also assume that your solution is going to be in this form like c times e to the power rx, and you would pretty much get the same thing. Now, y equals c times e to the x works. Here's the thing. This is a non, uh, this is a homogeneous solution. So I could probably call this y sub h, right? And then I'm going to be looking for the particular solution, which means can we find a solution that will satisfy the um, non-homogeneous case? So let's call that y sub p for particular solution. Some people, I think, call this complementary solution, maybe a different variant. But it's going to, how do you decide what type of solution we're going to have? Our original problem was y prime minus y equals x. So because of the x on the right hand side, I'm just going to assume that my particular solution is going to be a linear function, which is mx plus b, just because of the x on the right hand side. Make sense? Now here's what we're going to do. y general or just y in general is going to equal the homogeneous solution y sub h plus y sub p which is c e to the x plus mx plus p. So that's going to be the general solution. If you want you can write it as y sub g. No big deal. Now we're going to go ahead and actually plug this into our original equation. Let's go ahead and do it. First, differentiate both sides. It's going to be c to the x plus m, the derivative of mx, and b is a constant. And then we're going to go ahead and plug it in. y prime minus y equals x in the original equation. 
And now we're going to replace y prime with c e to the x plus m minus c e to the x plus m x plus b. And this is supposed to equal x. And then from here, c e to the x is going to cancel out. We're going to get negative m x plus m minus b equals x. Notice that these two have to be equal for all values of x. So the coefficient of x must be 1 because it's 1 here and the constant term needs to be 0. This means m is equal to negative 1 which is the same as b. So m and b are both negative 1 which gives us the general solution. And remember the general solution was written in this form, right? So we can go ahead and replace c with just c. So c is going to stay the same and we can just replace m with negative 1 which is going to give us negative x minus 1. So that's going to be our general solution where c is a real constant. Make sense? Great. So this was the second solution, remember? And this is just the first branch of the second solution which I guess uh, I can call 2a, right? So let's go ahead and call this 2a and now we're going to talk about 2b all right or 2b or not 2b let's see so the 2b basically uses pretty much the same approach y prime equals x plus y after flipping both sides but it kind of uses a variation so in the 2b we're going to use substitution how we're going to place x plus y x plus y with something how about z and we've done that before, right? So z is going to be x plus y, which means if you differentiate both sides, and notice that y prime is the same thing as dy over dx, so all differentials are with respect to x. And if you differentiate z, you're going to get z prime, the derivative of x with respect to x is 1, and the derivative of y with respect to x is y prime. Why do I keep saying with respect to? Because it's important. You're going to see in a little bit why this is important. So hang in there, okay? So we got now z prime equals 1 plus y prime. And from here, what am I getting? y prime isolated is going to give me z prime minus 1. But notice that I have y prime on the left hand side. So I can replace it with z prime minus 1. And on the right hand side, I have a z or x plus y, which I can replace with z. Make sense? That's my equation so far. Let's go ahead and add one to both sides and isolate z prime. It's important to isolate whatever prime because we're going to turn this into a separable equation. Or this is a separable equation. We're going to separate the variables. Again, z prime means dz over dx. And this is equal to z plus 1. And now switch sides. dz over z plus 1 equals dx. And guess what we're going to do next? integrate both sides exactly that's what you do with separable equations and this is easily integrable and how if you integrate 1 over z plus 1 i'm going to ignore absolute value you can definitely use it but i'm just going to write assume that z plus 1 is greater than 0 and write this as ln z plus 1 because that's the integral or antiderivative or one of the antiderivatives and dx is just going to be x plus a constant. Again, this c doesn't have to be the same thing as the other c. Don't worry about it. It's just an arbitrary dummy constant. Okay? So far so good. Are you following? Now, this is z plus 1. And obviously, I do need to get z plus 1. So remember, this is e. So we can write z plus 1 as e to the power x plus c, which is e to the x times e to the c. But e to the c is a constant. Let's replace it with k. So we can get z plus 1 equals k e to the x or z equals k e to the x minus 1. Again, k is a constant because c is a constant. Now, it's a good time to back substitute. What is z? z is x plus y. So from here, you can basically isolate y. y is just going to be k e to the x minus 1 minus x. And you can go ahead and compare this to 2b or 2a. I think that was... That was 2a, right? c e to the x minus x minus 1 is the same thing. x and 1 can be switched around. But, that, but this is 2b, right? <laughs> okay, great. So let's go ahead and talk about the first method real quick. And the first method basically does not flip both sides. It just treats the equation as is. What is dx over dy? It's the derivative of x with respect to y. I'm just going to call that x prime. And I'm going to call this z again. But this time x prime is just going to be what? 1 over z. But what is z? z is x plus y 
So we have to be careful here. What is z prime? Remember, we're differentiating with respect to y now. So the derivative of x with respect to y is x prime. The derivative of y with respect to y is dy over dy, which is 1. You see, the details are very important here. This is dy over dy. Okay, we're almost done. So we, gotta, uh, we have no more room. And from here, x prime is just going to be z prime minus 1. You can go ahead and write this as z prime minus 1 and set it equal to 1 over z. Isolate z prime as 1 plus 1 over z. And then that's going to become z plus 1 over z. And then you can go ahead and write the dz as dz over dy. I mean, z prime as dz over dy. Again, remember, we're differentiating and integrating with respect to y here. So it's just going to be dz plus 1 over z. And then if you... Put the z's together, it's going to look like this. And then finally, by integrating both sides, you can kind of integrate and integrate. You're going to get something like this from here, which is going to be z minus ln z plus 1 equals y plus another constant. But z is x plus y, so we can kind of write this as x plus y minus ln z plus 1 equals y plus c and then you can go ahead and cancel the y's out and then isolate the x and then don't worry i'm not going to do the abominable lambers w function here because i know some people dislike it but again uh, it's a really good equation unfortunately though the result from all from alpha is in terms of tada Lambert's W function. So don't hate me for that. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.